Welcome to the second video on the subject of solar PV, DC storage and EV charging. In the first video, we looked at what happens to solar panels on the roof and how we get the electricity out of those solar panels and back into the AC system again. What are we gonna look at in this video, Gary? It's all well and good producing electricity on your roof, but with limited feed-in tariffs and probably us out all day long, how are we gonna harness that energy and store it is the next part of the video. So in my video, we're gonna look at DC storage. So we're gonna go and look at some big batteries, yeah? We are. Let's go. So we come inside, we've sent Joe upstairs to fumble around in amongst the luggage in the roof space. And I'm here with Sam from Over Electrical. Hello, yeah. Sam. Sam's gonna, I think, give away some of the mysteries of the DC storage. But before we do that, Sam, can we just explain some of the basics behind the electrical install that yeah, you've done for us? Yeah, so we've installed um, a new uh, Luiden board, uh, which contains everything that's needed for the solar and the battery side of things. Uh, we've then got um, an AC isolator to, if there's ever any maintenance work that needs to be done on the on the battery, we'll isolate the power going to the battery. Uh, we've then got a TP link here providing the internet connection for the battery, okay. um, just because the, the, the hardwired route was, was impossible. Um, so we've got a TP link doing that. Um, and yeah, obviously the board contains all the fuses and everything that's required for the for the battery. Can we have a look at, uh, yeah, inside course. there? So I can see we've got a uh, 16 amp circuit breaker bringing the feed in from from the solar PV on the roof. Yep. And that's 16 amps AC coming in, yes? Yep. And I can see you've also quite wisely installed some surge protection devices. There's a lot of electronic equipment in this yeah. installation. Do yeah, you agree? there's a lot, yeah. So it's obviously mythical to everybody out there that we're gonna be start storing our electricity. And the first thing I've got there is you're still bringing down from the roof AC. Yeah. These aren't AC batteries, are they? No, no, they're, <laughs> they're, not, they're, no. they're still DC. Yeah. DC yeah. Can, can you just explain that story to us then? Yeah, so, so basically the solar comes um, comes down from the loft um, as AC, the, the solar inverter's up there. So that generates, um, takes the DC generation from the panels, yep. converts that into AC power. That then feeds down here into the circuit breaker you just mentioned. Yes. Um, that then um, is, is fed to the loads in the house uh, automatically. But if there is any extra, extra solar power that can't be fed to the loads in the house, the battery kicks in and, and um, sends the power into its into its stored battery module. So, so let's break that down. So let's say we're producing 10 amps on the roof. The house is using eight of those amps, and that means two amps will go and be stored in DC yeah. in the batteries here. Simple as that, yeah. How though, how simple? What, what's the control system that's in place? So, so the, the solar isn't actually rerouted through this battery or anything like that. The solar is um, just another circuit um, on the electrical system um, and the battery is exactly the same. The battery is just a, another circuit on the electrical system. But okay. what, what the battery does is it monitors how much um, solar has been produced um, how much consumption the house is, is using, and then it's able to, to work out how much solar is, um, if there's excess solar being generated. So if you take the example of, there's a thousand watts being uh, generated on the roof, yep. um, and there's 500 watts of demand in the house, okay. there's 500 watts that the solar would previously have been sending back to the grid. And that's really important, sending it back to the grid, and the yeah. likelihood is that we wouldn't get a feed-in tariff for that. No, you'd, you'd get a very, um, under the feed-in tariff that this customer has, uh, they, get, they get paid, uh, uh, half whatever the generator get 4p so if okay. you can use all of that power it, it's, it's more beneficial and in the daytime when we're all out of work obviously that 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 500 watts that you described there now needs to go somewhere and that's what's going to get effectively diverted but it isn't diverted it just draws no. that amount of current yeah, out of the system so, so the battery as soon as it's made that calculation of that 500 watts that it that it's been sent back to the grid the battery goes right there's 500 watts that i can have so the battery just creates a demand of 500 watts okay so the the uh the, the inverter inside the battery just uh, switches on to 500 watts and it then converts that back into DC like you say the batteries are DC batteries um, and uh, puts that power into the into the battery modules for use later on when okay. there's a high demand. Is there a CT clamp or meter or something yeah. that, that can do that for yeah, us? Yeah so there's a, there's a CT clamp um, on the main incoming supply okay, yeah. which is monitoring the consumption in the house Okay. and then within our, our uh, Luden board here yeah. there's a CT clamp on the on the solar circuit as well. Ah oh, right okay. Um, that then feeds um, the information back to there's a little um, uh, meter here uh, the Modbus meter so that then it uh, communicates with the battery via um, a cat5 data cable to tell the battery what's going on in the system and therefore how much energy to draw in the charging process yeah or to discharge if, if, if you had the opposite scenario so in other words if all of a sudden consumption in the house started to increase and the batteries were ready to give off their you know energy back into yeah. the install it works the process in reverse yeah so if you take the example of um before we had a thousand watts of solar and 500 watts consumption yeah. say that the solar is still producing a thousand watts 
but the house is now needing 1500 watts of power um, so now the the, the solar isn't sending any power back to the grid it's sending all of its power that it can um, into the house and yes. taking up the thousand watts so now we've got 500 watts of power needed in the house so yes. instead of buying that in like would have previously happened the battery goes right i need to discharge that power into the house to stop the customer buying in any power so it's just the full process in reverse the power comes from the batteries through the inverter and feeds that 500 watts into the house so we, to, so to we take, take electricity off. from the roof we've come down the excess energy of ac has been converted to dc in the batteries yeah and once we need it we just convert it back again back to ac and back out again yeah is there any yeah. losses in that process there's, there's small losses yeah yeah there is there is small losses with any any anything that's got transformers and things like that there is always going to be small losses but they are small um and these uh the, the solid batteries are in my opinion, one of the best out there. Um, but yeah, there, there is losses in, in short, but you, not very big ones. You mentioned those batteries. Can we have a look at those next? Yeah, of course. Let's have a look. So Sam, we're inside the Sonnen DC storage bank. And as I would always say to Joe, I'll throw you a bone if you want to explain what's happening in there for me. Yeah, of course, yeah. So um, right at the top, we've got the inverter. Okay. So that will, um, if the battery needs to charge, that'll uh, take the AC in from the from the system on that created demand that we were just talking about if yep. the battery needs to charge and um, convert that to DC power and put that into the batteries. And then opposite to that, that's also the piece of kit that takes the DC power from the batteries, converts it to AC power and puts it into the house if there's um, if we need to discharge the battery. It looks really complicated. So the, the electricians watching the video at the moment will be saying, it's all above and beyond me. Electrical connections that you made, you talk about being in the top of the actual yeah. panel. What connections did you make? Yeah, so um, what we've got on the top, we've got the, the AC cable in. Um, so that acts as the route um, for the power to be sent into the battery if it needs to charge up. Okay. And if the battery needs to discharge, it's the route back into the house for the power. So one cable, one cable. cable. Okay, one brilliant. Cable. So that's one yeah. cable. Any others? Um, we've then got two uh, Cat5 data cables. Uh, one is via the TP link that we mentioned for the internet connection to the battery, so yep. we can monitor it and Sonnen can look at it as well if there's ever a problem, um, and also the customer. And the, uh, there's a comms cable as well, which goes to the little meter in that, in that board that yep. I mentioned that does the calculation, and that transmits the signal of how much power it needs to either charge up with or discharge. So the fear from the electrician's point of view should be zero. So yeah. we're talking about one cable feeding it both in and out, and two Cat5 cables, and yeah. it's done. That's it. Yeah. Have we given away the, the mystery now? Yeah, well, you haven't mentioned that yeah, yeah, so all of a sudden, <laughs> perhaps everybody in the street's going to be putting them in That's now, right, because yeah. Of the, yeah, the electrical install's not as complicated as it looks inside here. Yeah. Was there any self-building inside here, or was it built like this? Yeah, so when this system comes, it comes as, um, this is a 15 kilowatt system, so, um, there's this, this top cabinet that, in, that includes the inverter that has capacity to store five kilowatts of batteries. So each one of these batteries is 2.5 kilowatts. Okay. Um, so you can just get the five kilowatt cabinet uh, and put a five kilowatt system in. Um, but you can also buy um, this e extension cabinet here, which allows for another 10 kilowatts of, of storage. So 15 kilowatts is the maximum you can install. So that comes as the, the case comes um, separately boxed up. Each battery module comes separately boxed up and the extension cabinet comes separately boxed up. So to actually install it, um, like with a lot of things, you install the case onto the wall first yeah. with some really good fixings because there's quite a bit of weight on it. Um, and then install the battery modules um, one by one, obviously. And all, but all the DC cable uh, cables and everything come with the kit. So you, there's not all this wiring in here yeah. comes with the kit. So it's more flat pack furniture type yeah, instructions bit, yeah. in order to put yeah, it together. Yeah. So Sam, other than the solar around the roof, is there any other way I can utilize the benefit of having DC storage at home? Yeah, yeah. So we can actually set this to charge up um, overnight. Um, this customer has an off-peak um, electricity rate, so they pay around uh, four pence per unit from I believe it's midnight till four in the morning okay. or around those times. And so we can actually set this battery to charge up um, on that four pence electricity overnight. And then during the day when they're paying maybe 15, 16 P, it'll discharge that cheap electricity into the property. Because this time of year, winter time, there's only a limit of how much solar power can be produced anyway. So if we, we can utilize this battery to charge up 
still having to buy the power in, but they're only buying it in at 4p and then using that to cover their loads during the day when they're maybe paying 15, 16p. So there's an instant saving there that can be made. That's really clever. That's like the, I don't know, the Economy 7 when we used to have things like storage heaters. Yeah, yeah. So it's a progression of storage yeah. heaters. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I like the thinking behind that. Mm. So this customer's actually got the most amazing benefit out of DC storage because they've also got an EV, you know, battery powered car outside. Yeah. So is that what you're finding that the the installer of solar PV DC storage is also linked to having obviously a battery powered vehicle as yeah. well? Sam? Yeah, it's all becoming part of like a, an energy package really. So as people move more and more towards electric vehicles, they're obviously getting rid of the uh, the cost of um, the fuel to power those uh, vehicles, being diesel or petrol, and that's adding cost on to their electricity bills but with, with kit like this we can then start to reduce those bills as well so it starts to save the customer more and more money because if we can reduce the the bills of their electricity bills it means that the car costs them less to run and their overall um their overall electricity bills are, are, are a lot less um, than there would have been if they didn't have something like this to, to store all that power. So linking in with what Joe said, probably upstairs in the roof, you're going to be driving around on sunshine, Sam. That's it, yeah, that's it. Yeah, driving around the sunshine uh, whilst also powering your, your washing machine whilst you're out at work on, on sunshine as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a really, really smart system. So as we look at the market developing, do you see this being a, a strong indicator of what you'll be doing more and more of in the yeah. future? Yeah, this is this is only just the start of, of this industry, really. Um, previously, it was a lot of box moving and just like a standard kit for whatever house. The reality is that's not the case because everyone has different um, different consumption needs, different amounts of solar. You can't just box sell this stuff of you know five kilowatts to everyone. Systems need to be designed for um, the customer's budget, but also their energy needs as well. Um, this stuff, just self-consumption, like how this works, where it charges up if there's surplus and discharges if, if the property needs um, extra power is only the start of this. When, when we start getting into buying and selling power directly to other customers and things, it's it's a really exciting industry and it changes month to month. So this is only just the start of, of battery battery installations. So. So you can say that eFix are right at the forefront of the changes in the electrical industry as we look to installers becoming now actually producers of electricity rather than consumers of electricity yeah. in the modern electrical domestic installation. So thanks to Sam from Overall Electrical for taking the mystery out of DC storage for me. However, make sure you go back and if you haven't already seen it, the first video where Joe's in the roof space, where he's talking about the solar PV array, about the oversizing of the panels based on demand, what happens to the excess energy if there is any, and why why have they oversized those panels in order to optimize the amount of electricity that can be produced in this domestic dwelling?